outside the city of Atlanta, go east about 60 or 70 miles to the town of Elberton, and then go north on Highway 77 about 10 miles. You'll find off to the right what's called the Georgia Guidestones. Looks kind of like stone. These big, huge granite rocks set up there. This was done by a guy who gave a pseudonym, came in, paid cash, had this company set these things up in 1980. He called himself R.C. Christian, uh, but that's not his real name. It says it right on the stones, a pseudonym, false name. On these Georgia Guidestones, it gives the Ten Commandments for the New World Order. Ten Commandments for the New World Order. The, fir the first commandment was to maintain humanity under a half billion. I went there and looked at those things and said, now, hold on a minute. Today's population is six billion. They want to maintain humanity under one half billion. Looks like a lot of people got to die for their plan to work. From the days of the Inquisition, the church was always running the world. The Vatican is one of the richest countries in the world. They have over a billion followers. Some of them donate money for each month on a regular basis. They have no army. They have no expenses. They just swim in money. Add to that all the treasures stolen from Am Israel and other nations for generations, and you end up with an endless amount of money. In the Vatican, there is a group of Christians who are more extreme than the rest, the Jesuits. They are the ones who led the Inquisition in Spain, actually, and many, many pogroms against Jews throughout history. So this Jesuits group got together over a hundred years ago with a group of some of the most wealthy people in the world in order to make the so-called New World Order. In fact, their goal is to dominate the whole world. They may pretend to be very friendly, and they say it in a nice way. We want a world with no wars, no aggravation. So we should have a world with one language, one nation, one government, one religion. Then there will be no more wars, no more fighting. It will be a peaceful world. That sounds really nice for a regular secular man who has no restrictions of any religion. It sounds lovely. And they say, let's make a religion consists of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Let's invent something beautiful which would attract all mankind. In fact, that's exactly how they invented Christianity at that time. Jesus was not a Christian. He lived and died as a Jew. Only many years after his death, the Romans took his character and established Christianity in order to help them conquer the world. So they took Judaism, made it a little more nice and easy, more convenient to the public. If something is forbidden, according to the Torah, so what? We, we will allow it. Don't worry. Jesus already suffered for your sins. Just believe in him and you're all good. What a nice and easy way to get a ticket straight to heaven. Same thing with this group, headed by the Vatican's Jesuits. They want to take over the whole world, including Muslims, including Jews, including all nations. So they say, let's do such a thing, a new world order, one language and one religion, that it will be actually composed of all religions, so it could attract everyone to join. They made themselves the Ten Commandments, just like the Bible's Ten Commandments, and they wrote in there, that there should be a greener world, that we must consider nature. Each person has to do sport and maintain a healthy body, things like that. It sounds just like the ancient Greek and Roman culture. The stronger race should survive and should get rid of the weak people or make them slaves. The world should have a small population. Large population harms the natural resources with air pollution, etc. Their goal is to have globally less than half a billion people. Today we have about six to seven billion people. Their goal is half a billion. How do we eliminate the rest? Who will live? Who will die? They don't talk about that. But that's their goal. They actually declare it in their official Ten Commandments. And these are the same people, by the way, who supported Hitler. It's a known fact that the Pope himself was a supporter of Hitler. And those people who are currently with the current Pope are today in a global control. How did they get to a global control? Without war, without an army, 
without anything, with just money. Together with them, there are over a hundred of the wealthiest people in the world. The media belongs to them as the monopoly of the world. The biggest shopping centers belong to them. Money makes money. There are people who have so much money, they don't know what to do with it. You put something like two billion dollars in the bank, just with the everyday interest, you earn tens of millions of dollars without doing anything. So with their money and machinations, they slowly entered all kinds of world governments, key people in various countries around the world, and bought them with their money, bribed them. At the same time, they also act in corrupt ways. They put in front of the key people all kinds of temptations. They photograph them in embarrassing situations. And then they say, if you're not with us, we will show the video in public. Your career is finished. In some cases, they even wiped out people. Anyway, they have connections with most governments in the world today. The United Nations are together with them. The UN, in fact, is their representative government. They have armies around the world, police, security forces. No one can stop them, except for the Almighty, of course. And everything with money. All the presidents of the United States today, most of the Congress is in their pocket. It doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democratic, they basically serve the same satanic plan. So how do they want to take over the world? In the Italian Mafia, practically in every Mafia, there is a method. When they want to take protection money, they come to the shopping area, they burn all the stores, they make a mess, terror. The next day, they come to the store owner and say to him, pay us protection fee and we will protect you. They protect him from the terror they themselves cause. If he refuses, then at night they come again, causing him more destruction. Pay us protection fee. We will protect you. Finally, the store owner gives up. He has no choice. This group that wants to take over the world works the same exact way. They take all kinds of terrorist groups, paying them a lot of money. It is officially known, by the way, that Osama bin Laden was trained at the FBI. He was working for them for a while and suddenly he became a terrorist independently, having his own army. Also the head of ISIS, he was a small terrorist in Bin Laden's group and all of a sudden he went out and formed his own army of terrorists. So they get the money from America and from other countries that are also in this conspiracy. They receive help and professional advice from them and these terrorists have no brain. Just turn them on, give them money and they will make a mess wherever you want. Of course the terrorists themselves do not know who is behind all this and what's his goal. Also many people who are with them work for them. They don't know exactly who is at the top of the pyramid and what's his ultimate plan. They have a lot of small enterprises, small organizations in each country. And so they cause conflicts between different groups of people, between nations, between countries. They make a mess so that the world would be in great fear, it would collapse, and then they will come and say, hold on, let us make some order here. We need a new world order. We'll keep you safe. So they put their army, which is actually the UN's army, everywhere on the globe, supposedly to restore order, to keep the citizens from all sorts of terrorists, while they themselves support and encourage them. And so they actually take over the world just like in the Mafia technique, while the head of this pyramid is actually in the Vatican. They have no problem with people getting killed. Anyway, according to their Ten Commandments, the world should contain less than half a billion people. They cause a mess in the world in order to take control, and they have endless money. Today they are deeply set in every state, including the state of Israel, in the left and right wings, they give a lot of donations to organizations, they contribute even ultra-Orthodox yeshivas. Anyone who can be bribed, they know the secret. If you receive money from me, you are bribed. You're on my side. 
even if I'm not telling you what to do, you're automatically in my favor. So as I mentioned, together with them, over a hundred of the wealthiest people in the world, and once the media is in their hands, they decide what to publish and what not to publish. What should we hear in the news and what shouldn't we? The media is the most powerful influential force in the world today. They even decide who will be the president and who will not. They are simply dominating public opinion and we are all in their hands. Now, America's economy should have crashed a long time ago. Did you know America has over $18 trillion debt? They are printing money electronically, just on the computers. Everything in America is not real. It is an air balloon that one day must explode. The ones in charge on the Americans' money is also part of these guys. Many politicians, media figures, Hollywood stars, it's really an organized and well-connected mafia. For over a hundred years, they did it behind the scenes, quiet and slow. Now they are already approaching the ultimate goal of their plan, and then they go out openly, as soon as they feel they have control over the world. Have you noticed they move forces within the United States? I have friends in the US. They say that in many states, there are many soldiers exercising, thousands of soldiers. What do they have to do inside America? After all, they have no borders with Hamas or with all sorts of enemies that might put them in danger, as we have here in Israel. They have no threats. So what are the soldiers doing there? They plan to take over America and bring down the economy, which is no solid fit anyways. They only decide in advance when the dollar will be worth nothing, and as soon as this happens, they would start a panic. It's very possible they will leave Obama as a president. How come? They have elections soon. Well, they can just cause an emergency situation, like a huge terrorist attack or a natural disaster in the US. Then they declare martial law. That's it. No elections, no freedom, no democracy. It's an emergency situation. Now, I'm not sure about that, but there's a good chance they want to keep Obama in power. Why? He suits them very well. He speaks to Christians, and he's a Muslim as well. It could help their idea to turn the whole world into one government. Anyway, don't forget, I remind you that everything is led by the Almighty. Eventually, they only carry out God's will. So what they are going to do is to bring down the American economy. As a result, all the world's economy will fall down and then we shall experience what our sages of the Talmud said 2,000 years ago, about the end of days, that a penny will be diminished from the pocket. There will be no money at all. American people would start riots. The government is ready for that. They have soldiers on standby all across America. And uh, it's got the five regions for the FEMA camps. And it talks about barricades and barbed wire and, 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 and armed guards. And uh, it, it says that they built the camps and that now they need to get ready to staff them now. And realize that the new economy is to put tens of millions of people, we already have the biggest prison population in the world, in, in, this, in this archipelago, this, 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 this giant chain of facilities all over the country. I was pulled to the side road, which was uh, uh, a new cut gravel dirt road in front of a business, a builder supply business. And the right side of the road was filled with, uh, which I thought was portable toilet store. I never looked at them that close. Same in color, maybe black, but which was an odd color. And I asked him about the, the field of black boxes, and he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred, at that time, he said there was 125,000 there. 
I've had people calling me saying they go out to their mailbox and they find a little red dot or a little blue dot on their mailbox and they wonder what the little red dot and blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government so when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law, if you have a red dot on your mailbox, they take you out immediately and shoot you right in the head. But if you have a blue dot, they take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton to put those with the blue dot on your mailbox in those concentration camps. Now, if you go out and you find a pink dot on your mailbox, that means that they believe you'll be a good slave and you're going to go along with the program. For a new world order. The Pope, interestingly enough, will be busy in the U.S. all of September, as on September 15th, the Pope will also be speaking at the U.N., and then on September 24th, he'll also be speaking at the U.S. Congress. Jade Helm, a massive, unprecedented rollout of the U.S. military inside of the U.S., runs from July 15th until September 15th. This is particularly interesting in that there always seems to be a drill being run by the government during when an actual crisis occurs. Jade Helm has already begun in preparations, and the amount of military equipment being amassed in the U.S. is truly mind-boggling. There's a lot of speculation that this amount of military buildup in the American South is in preparation for some sort of civil unrest. Recently, the New York-based Federal Reserve announced it's moving its operations outside of New York to Chicago because of concerns about a natural disaster. One might ask, what natural disaster are they expecting in New York that they aren't expecting in Chicago? Meanwhile, the U.S. federal government is buying another 62 million rounds of ammunition commonly used in AR-15s for training purposes. If you pay attention to the U.S. military, they are apparently preparing for a massive amount of unrest inside the U.S. And if you pay attention to the U.N., September seems to be a very busy month with leaders from around the world, including the Pope, attending numerous major events. In fact, we've already seen the first rumblings of a coming collapse happening in both Greece and China. And in Greece, the banks and stock market have been closed for weeks, and they're laying the foundation for a civil chaos that I expect to fully foment over the summer and explode in September. This will set off a chain reaction that will shake the entire U.S. dollar-based financial system. They can also cause situations like natural disasters. They have no problem with that. Simply put a nuclear bomb, atomic bomb, for example, under Manhattan, and you have a tsunami. They are so successful with the plans, they think they are like a god. Who knows if some of the natural world disasters we had in the recent years were not of their job. You don't know anything today for sure. In general, we are already in the final point. Our Talmudic sages wrote about the end of days that we will have times of which we have no one to rely on but our Father in Heaven. We really have no one to trust. Therefore, we should only rely on God, Hashem, the Almighty, and pray to Him. Ask Him to save us. In short, they are the ones who established ISIS, and whenever they wish, they will destroy them. Just like they killed Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, it's not a problem for them. Right now, they want ISIS alive. ISIS are doing their job very well, cleaning up all the Arab countries, all this mess, the Arab Spring, all the Arab rulers falling down one by one, that's all their plans. So now, millions of refugees fleeing from Arab countries, mingling with the West, then there are no Arab governments in function, and at the same time, Western countries are filled with potential terrorists who would do a lot of mess, then the UN will come and say, we will bring the army, we will have an order here. Actually, that's what they did during the Gulf War. They sent American soldiers with Patriot missiles here to Israel. They actually have American bases here in Israel. What for? To protect us. That's how they get into all countries. They have bases in Germany, in the Philippines, Egypt, Europe, all over the world. And they are all one language, one plan, just like in the generation of the Babylon Tower. And as I mentioned before, they also plan to have 
one religion. That's how we see recently the Pope in many important events. He came to Jerusalem, he got his people into the tomb of David, he came to the Congress, the first time in history that the Pope speaks in the U.S. Congress. He spoke at the U.N. and everything is with friendly face, in the name of tolerance, so to speak. The Vatican is actually at the top of this pyramid, and they represent Rome, the Roman Kingdom, of which the Talmud says that it will spread all over the world, right before the revelation of the Mashiach. So soon we're going to see economic collapse and bloody wars throughout the world, just as it is written both in the Talmud and the Prophet, the Tanakh. The European and American residents are currently at the most dangerous situation, actually and realize that they have no problem with the nuclear war because they anyway wish the world's population to be much less as long as they, the mafia people allegedly arranged. They have fancy palaces deep, deep under the ground with all that is needed to survive. But in Israel, we are in fact in the best state. First of all, the Torah says explicitly, the eyes of the Lord, your God, are watching over the land from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. And we have seen, since the birth of the State of Israel, so many miracles, the Six Day War, the Gulf War, all the wars we've had. Thousands of rockets flying over here from every direction and barely a few dozen dead. One terror attack in the US, World Trade Center, and thousands are dead. One terror incident in Paris and hundreds of casualties. In Israel, we see miracles by miracles. Here is the Divine Presence, the Shekhinah. Here we have a special Siata Dishmaya from above. Secondly, you should know that the goal of this evil group, just like all the objectives of the evil forces of Sitra Acha, and in fact of every nation throughout history, is to have their capital in Jerusalem. Everyone always wants Jerusalem, because according to the Zohar, Jerusalem is the source of the prosperity of the world. It's the place of the connection between this material world and the spiritual divine world from above. So they bring in lots of money to Israel. They build, renovate. You see how many new roads we have near Jerusalem? Recently they made a light rail in Jerusalem. Where does our government bring money for all this from? It's all with their money. They contribute supposedly in the name of Christians, supporters of Israel, they contribute a lot of money to the state of Israel. But it's only for their own purpose. Here they plan to have their base, their capital. So according to the prophecies of the Bible, Edom will fall apart and will be destroyed. And they are actually the ones who cause its destruction. It says explicitly in Jeremiah, and Edom will be a wasteland just like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. According to the prophecies, the state of Israel, as known today, will fall as well. It might be falling into this mafia's hand or not, I don't know. But our sages say explicitly that during that chaos in Edom between the Arabs and the Christians, the state of Israel will fall apart. I showed it here before. I showed you all the verses and quotations from the Zohar and the Talmud regarding that. Anyway, then they expect a big surprise. It's actually not in their plan. The Mashiach ben David will show up here in Israel. Hope it will be soon, Bezrat Hashem. And then the Mashiach will not have to fight against the whole world because the whole world would already be in their hands and most of it will be destroyed and crushed. The Mashiach will just have to knock them down, their heads, in the Vatican and the UN, that's all. In fact, the Mashiach wouldn't even have to go after them. They themselves will come here to Jerusalem. As King David says in Psalms, chapter 2, All the nations will gather in the end of days to a great war against Hashem and against His Mashiach. And this is the famous Gog and Magog war everyone talks about. As the prophet Ezekiel promised more than 2,000 years ago, Ezekiel chapter 38, I'm against thee, Gog, the president and head 
of Meshech and Tuval. After many days you shall be called upon. In the latter days you shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many peoples upon the mountains of Israel. You shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land and you and all your bands and many peoples with you. They will wage a great war against the people of Israel. But that will be a divine process. Hashem Himself will repay them, as the prophet Ezekiel promises in the name of God. And it shall come to pass at that same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel. There shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. The fishes of the sea and the fall of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the men that are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and I will assault against him with pestilence and with blood and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstorms fire and brimstones that's exactly what's going to happen no doubt the Holy One blessed be he will settle the account with Israel's enemy. So this is the whole story. God is preparing the whole world for the Mashiach to take over on a silver platter, just like in the story of Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz with the fighting cocks. Everything is prepared for the sake of the complete redemption. Finally, we should know that whatever we go through, it's all about examinations clarifications, berurim venisyonot. We are in fact under the magnifying glass. Hashem examines and inspects us very carefully to see who chooses the spiritual life, the life of Torah and mitzvot and faith in the Creator, and who chooses the worldly life of self-indulgence, full of lusts, the life we have in today's Western world. The American culture and eventually all the rest of the world which is influenced by her culture and follows her, is exactly like the ancient Egypt. They write on the dollar in God we trust, but actually the dollar is what they worship, the money. If you have money, you are somebody. If you don't have, you are nobody. In today's free world, we have it all in abundance. Luxury, entertainment, hotels, fancy restaurants, debauchery, immodesty, internet, iPhones, everything is just about money and lusts and pleasures. Everything is confusing and addicting and sometimes even with a kosher bedat stamp. Yes, also the super orthodox could join the party. Just come and enjoy this life all the way with their shiny wigs and fancy clothes while carrying the Talmud books under their arms and reading psalms. And God is sitting up there watching and noting who is disgusted with all this crap who is looking for spirituality who is looking for the truth within all this mess who wants the modest and simple life to be closer to Hashem and then he marks him in his eternal book for life for eternal salvation and that is exactly what happened in the first redemption from Egypt our sages in the Talmud tell us that a large percentage of the Jews did not want to leave Egypt, even though they were enslaved and have suffered a lot, but they didn't want to give up the worldly life they had and go with Moses to the spiritual unknown world to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. So they died in Egypt in the plague of darkness. Hundreds of thousands of Israelites died in Egypt. That's what our sages say explicitly. And so will be in the end of days. Not all Jews will, God forbid, be able to disconnect themselves from the impurity of this world. Not everyone will want to give up the pleasures of this world. And therefore the Holy Zohar says that in the end of days there will be 15 days of darkness in which all the Jews and also non-Jews who wouldn't have the zechut will die, God forbid. We are here in a cultural war between the culture of materialism and the culture of spirituality, which is actually ancient legendary war between Jacob and Esau. Esau wanted the pleasures of this world, 
with all his might, and Jacob was Ishtam Yoshevu Alim, just sitting and learning Torah. This is actually the clarification between Jacob and Esav. If you take the word USA in English, then in Hebrew writing, from right to left, A is actually the letter Ein of Esav. S is the Hebrew letter Sin. And U is formed by Yud and Vav of Esav. That's exactly how it goes. From left to right, USA, and from right to left, you get in Hebrew, Esav. Now also the Gentiles are under a magnifying glass. Many of them will die, and there will also be those who will survive to live the Mashiach days. God is checking them as well, who will live and who will not. We Jews are merciful, and we pray every day, three times a day, for all nations, even the Gentiles, to have prosperity and health. But the Bible says it explicitly, that two-thirds of this world are about to be destroyed, God forbid. That's what ahead of us. And many shall be purified and made white, but the wicked shall do evil, and none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. Our sages keep telling us over and over again that in the end of days there will be a selection. Not everyone will merit reaching the finish line. And so there will be in all the land the word of Hashem Two portions will be cut off and perish, and the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third into fire and purify it as one purifies silver, and I will refine it as one refines gold. This is what the prophets promise us. Only the righteous, the modest ones, only those who truly attach themselves to Hashem and follow His ways, only they will last and merit the eternal life in the world to come.